Here on Throttle House, we take testing very seriously. And today we have the new Ford Bronco Sport. And we wanted to test its rather modest 2,200 pound towing capacity. But what with COVID and limitations and low budgets, the best we could conjure up was making sure that Thomas had a big lunch. So far, the results are inconclusive. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the Ford Bronco Sport. Badlands edition. Guess what, folks? The Ford Bronco is back. And and, and this isn't it, but this is a pretty peppy little off-roady thing that nonetheless wears the Bronco badge. It has loads of style and character, and you can get it almost fully loaded, like today's example, for about $40,000 Canadian, or 32 grand US. Big name, small price. Is it worth it? Let's find out. Oh, and a huge thank you to the wonderful team at Eastgate Ford for making today happen. If you're new to Throttle House, no, no. we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and hit the bell. All right, finally driving the Bronco Sport. We've never been sure if we're excited about this because it's not quite the Bronco but this is the Badlands edition, so we get increased power. Where once in the other three trims you could get a three-cylinder 1.5-litre turbo, we get a two-litre inline-four turbo that does 250 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque. And it's a great power plant if you enjoy the sound of someone gardening over yonder. Yeah, it sounds like a lawnmower or a vacuum cleaner, or a leaf blower. Part of the leaf blower lawnmower vacuum cleaner family. The Blomo Sapiens. Sorry. But that's not so important because the whole point of this car, the whole vibe it gives off is off-road. So you've got the CRV and you've got the Mazda CX-5 and they all feel like cars. And then the RAV4 kind of steps towards the forerunner and it feels more like an off-roader. This goes the extra mile beyond that it really feels like it's made for off-road. The driving position is very high. It feels very truck-like. The steering also feels very truck-like. The gearing, even though it doesn't have a low-range gearbox like something the Bronco or the Wrangler would have, it's, the gearing is so short that even the top of third gear, if I drop down using these tiny little paddle shifters, is like 76 kilometers an hour. So it's kind of already there. And that makes it feel snappy off the line. So even though you're not going to be revving it out, in the moments where you're trying to get up a little hill or go through that little crevice, it's going to do wonders. Speaking of seating positions, the rear seats also have a ton of headroom. Not a crazy amount of legroom, but still very comfortable. Every Bronco Sport has an eight-speed gearbox. And normally, Thomas and I have a few issues with Ford and their tuning for the transmission. I haven't got any issues with this. Very smooth, does what I want it to do. And unlike something like a RAV4, the drivetrain doesn't feel front wheel drive biased at all. It feels like every wheel is moving to get this car going from the get-go. But with truck-like things, and I, I was always confused about this because I don't know why you'd want a car to feel more like a truck, but people do, apparently. Unfortunately, with that comes negatives. So the ride, isn't fantastic. It handles impacts and potholes pretty well because there's a lot of wheel travel, but for the most part, it's pretty rough. And along with that comes pretty terrible NVH. It's loud. I was talking to Thomas on the phone from the car play and I was straining to hear him on full volume. That's also something to do with the lack of power in the sound system. We'll talk about that in a minute. 
See, the thing is, is that this is the Ford Bronco Sport, which means it's not a body-on-frame truck like the real Bronco is going to be. This is a Ford Escape with some, it's been dipped in off-road cladding. But this is the Badlands. That means it gets an advanced torque vectoring clutch-based rear axle with a locking differential. It actually shares some technology with the Ford Focus RS. So in theory, it should be able to do things that the other Bronco Sports can't. Like this. Okay, so I do have goat modes. Here we go. If I flick this over, I'm gonna select mud ruts. Um, this is weird, if you turn it this way, it goes the opposite way on the gates, it's kind of strange. But now in this mode, four wheel drive is locked and I can lock my rear differential. A lock diff is there so that if you pick up a wheel, it won't just spin that wheel in the open air, it'll actually allow the power to go to the other side. Now, disclaimer, obviously this car can get up this hill, many cars can, but I'm just demonstrating the fact that what I discovered earlier today is that this car doesn't See, there we go. It doesn't fully lock. It doesn't fully lock that rear axle. What it does is it just kind of applies the brakes and eventually sends the power. A locked axle is a locked axle. It's not really doing that. But it is still more than capable of getting up and over this hill. No problem. Okay, so Thomas has shown that this doesn't quite match up to the big Bronco brother with the live axle. But they have done things to make the Badlands better. It's got a better approach and departure angle than the other Bronco Sports. It's better for fording through water. And be honest with yourself, like how much off-roading are you really gonna do if you buy one of these? Unless your Tinder profile says, my other home is the Moab Desert, and you think that a winch is a brilliant Christmas present, this is gonna do everything you want it to do, and more, probably. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely capable enough, right? I do like the fact that there is some actual all-wheel drive tech going on here. It's, it's not just, put it this way, if you stomp on the throttle in a RAV4, it just spins its front wheels. Like, it, it takes a while to send any power to the rear. They've actually done some more with this one, which is good. It is kind of compromised, though, as an everyday car. Like, the suspension is wallowy, and the steering is kind of light. I guess it's a pretty strong on center feel at least. That's nice. But as James mentioned, it is very harsh. It feels like what Ford did was make this thing worse than a normal crossover to drive. And assuming that you're getting back a lot of the off-road stuff, that's fine. But just know that it's not as nice to drive as maybe a Hyundai Santa Fe. You see, there's certain unquantifiable things though, and even though my brain knows this is not a Jeep, it's not, you know, it's not an actual serious off-road vehicle, I'm getting kind of like a, a happy, you know, trundling over the bumps vibe with it when I drive it. It's kind of cool. You look over, you see the sculpting on the hood, the windscreen feels kind of vertical. It feels, you know, rugged in here. It doesn't feel like it's, supposed to be luxurious. It's not. And with great practicality comes great visibility. It has that going for it. Also, it's pretty cool looking. Okay. It's baby Bronco baby Day. Baby Bronco Day. Rugged baby Bronco Day. Rug because it's the the Badlands. Bad, rubbing, rugged baby Bronco Badlands. Rub, how's your lips? You sound cold. It's cold. Yeah. It is actually minus seven degrees right now. Minus We're just 13. so hardcore. We're just going in. The sun creates a little bit of like an oven and that's the only reason we're not actually hypothermic right Look, now. It, this is called the Badlands and we're yeah. going to be the badasses. Ooh. That sounds so Oh lame. god, that's the least yeah. cool thing you've ever said. Okay. Is this the least cool thing? No, this is actually kind of cool. Okay, fundamentally no, because it's not, like they've really doubled down on this. Yes. In even the same way is... they doubled down on the Mustang, Maki being a Mustang. Yeah, this doesn't seem to have as much hate though. For some reason, as as, yeah. uh, you, well, we don't know. Maybe in the comments, someone's writing hashtag not my Bronco right now. <laughs> in which case, fair enough. I think it looks cool though. Like it looks like a discovery from the side. I was next to a Honda CRV in traffic and it looked great. People are staring at this. They think that this is 
a Bronco. This is. Are people staring at it because it's new, or are they staring at it because? No, they're it's seeing. Cool? They're reading this and they go, "Oh, I know why." Uh, well, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't think I'd get it in the black. This can be had in two tone and in my in cyber orange is the coolest one. But there's also Area 51. The rapid sun red. The sun went away and it got really cold really quickly. I'm still absolutely fine. <laughs> I can almost make the uh, Gandalf rings <laughs> with, the, with the cold air, yeah. But what was he saying? But this is the Badlands. So we have 17 inch carbon gray wheels. Yep. We get a Badlands sticker. The ride height's higher. The ride height's higher. Look, yep. This looks like it's straight out of Mad Max. <laughs> yeah, Witness me! And actually it does a really cool visual on the inside when you start the car that matches those mountains. Yes. Uh, and then we got the skid plates, splash plates underneath. Yeah, so it's actually got, like, they, they made an effort to make it actually kind of off-roady. I just... Just notice some condensation in the in the headlights. So okay, so quality with Ford is a little bit of an issue. For example, yeah. this I, this is a thing that I noticed earlier while examining the engine bay. Remember, this is the top trim, and it's yes. forty thousand dollars Canadian. Yes, yeah, so you can only say so much, right? but at the same time, like like this is the oh uh, yeah. You see that? Like this is the fender. They didn't even like attempt. Oh, careful! Watch your head. They didn't attempt to cover that. I can like I can hear the oxidation. But like everything's rubberized in the back, back there, and the seats fold flat, and there's a bottle opener. It's got stuff. I don't know. It's got it's, some style. It has. It, it's got it, some style points. It's loaded with style, and that's probably the coolest thing about it is that it's not. It, if you wanted a little crossover, but you're like, nah, I don't really want a, the crossover look. I want something off-roady, but you don't actually want a truck. This is the way to do it. I mean, like the hardcore truck guys are going to give you a hard time probably yeah. for not owning a truck. But. but but my question is, they're going to probably sell a bunch of these. What if Mercedes, and I know they had the GLK, but yeah. what if Mercedes made a G-Wagon or G-Class, sorry. Yeah. And they, they made it like a mini G-Class. They did a two liter four cylinder, mm. which these days is, an, is the most aggressive AMG ever. <laughs> And they, and they did that for 40 right. grand. How many people would buy a baby G-Wagon if it actually looked like it? Too many is the answer. A lot, right? Yeah. That's, that's a cool concept, I think. That's what this is, basically. Why try and mock up a, you're a, gonna do a that? concept? Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna, we'll pop it up here. Uh, now that I've said that, you have to do it. Yeah. I'm just... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you're going to get a particular type of quality from me. I'm a very good at MS Paint. Let's look at the interior. All right. Okay. Woo, headroom, right? Yes. Yes. Lots of headroom. Lots of headroom. It is Why do you have a smile? You have like a, you it's just, a smile. it's very cheap feeding in here. Okay, yes it is. It's, well, off, I was off, looking for the good things. Off-roady. No, there's some good stuff going on. Okay. Um, the steering wheel. It's plastic. Yeah, it, this looks like a Peugeot 208 wheel, which I know yeah, is... Uh, even I know what that is. Yeah. Absolutely it does. Well, I'm not used to seeing an animal on a steering wheel in, in the States, apart from the Mustang and the Circle. So yeah. this this kind of looks immediately like a French wheel to me. What's, up, what's on the Peugeot wheel? It's the, it's the Lion. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It does, that's, why, that's why it does. Yeah. Uh, and the, that gauge cluster is very simple. Leaves a lot to be desired. It's got all the information you need. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's important to know that this, this doesn't have the Badlands package, which gets you Bang Olufsen, it gets you a heated leather steering wheel, it gets you leather Wait, seats. Bang and Olufsen? Yeah, it gets you Bang and Olufsen. Are you making this up? I'm not making this up. Wow. It gets you a moonroof oh. for 3,000 Canadian dollars. Oh, that's a pretty good deal. Sounds, yeah. I, I will say that, like, I don't think I've seen as much headroom in a car in a no, long time. It's good. <laughs> How do you feel now? Um, a headache? Not accomplished. Um, okay, so this is a nice kind of soft touch material here. This reminds me of the Rav4 a lot. Yeah, it, they've they've do, they've done rugged very very well. We we've got materials here that look like they would be able to be wiped down well, which yes. I understand very much, right? Because you puke everywhere. I don't know when you drive, maybe yeah, especially on the track. Okay, this is a phone holder. Yes. Yeah, this down here is a phone holder, so the front people well, are covered. Also, talking of the Badlands package, which you're so excited about, yeah. you get a wireless charger as well with that, but this doesn't oh. have it. Oh, that's a good package yeah. to get. But you're right, it's nice to have two phone holders. Not just that, back here, check these out. You've been already utilized one. Yeah, look at that, right in this little slot. That's actually really, I like that. I would, I would use that if I was in the back seat to control the music. Yeah, because then you could... Rather uh, than the well, wagon. Well, it depends on how long you're... Is your USBs are, oh, there's a USB in here too. I wonder if that controls the thing. Maybe it does. Who knows? Anyway, seats are comfortable. Yeah, heated. If, if they're made out of a security guard's uniform. Well, again, leather if you get the bad lands. Okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's very simple there's in here. There's honestly not a whole lot to talk about. This is just basic, what is it, you connect Ford? No, that's not. Whatever Ford stuff is called. It's fine. It's reasonably fast and it has Apple CarPlay, so who cares? Um, but there's a camera button here. 
which is cool, right? You use that for off-roading. You can use it for off-roading. You can select your select your different cameras, right? This is very very plush here. Very cush. Very cush. Yeah, yeah. Like so so when you're, you're off roading, your hands are going. You, you don't get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There's not. We've run into things to talk about now. Usually, there's more features. In I think it's, uh, yeah. No, this is good. They got. Oh, we've got, we've got to talk about this because everyone hates this. Yeah. Oh, this I don't like it. Fine. I don't it's like fine. It's fine because you can flick to drive without looking. The buttons are True. stupid because you have to look down and I go, I still would where rather have a shift. If we're going rugged, I'd rather have a shift. Always, always. And then we've got these uh, GOAT modes. It's the it, this control is the greatest of all time. Um, someone had to make the joke. <laughs> so, I wasn't going near it. We weren't going near it. But it, I, I like it because it feels like you can be rugged with it. You know, you get something like a Mazda CX-5. Yeah, it just makes you want to grow more facial hair. Uh, but you can jump or, around. Or an axe. You, you can jump around. You don't feel like you're breaking anything. Like, it feels... It yeah. feels strong, apart yeah. from the metal on the outside of the car, which uh, we've already mentioned. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, no, it, no it, it honestly feels like you wouldn't worry about using it for utility. Yeah. Right? The sound system's terrible. Okay, good it's to know. Terrible. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. But... It's banging on the sound system. In the if you get the you get. Apparently, it's a package you need to get. <laughs> I would like to try it at some point. The last thing I want to comment about is you, you mentioned this earlier, and I was like, oh, that's a really silly thing to say. The heater in this car is incredibly powerful. Yeah, it's warm. It's really it warm. It warms in here. up really quickly. Yeah. Which on a day like today is a thing. Yeah. It's a very important thing. Okay, uh, should we do a conclusion? Sure. Okay. The truth is, at this price, it's hard to fault a cool-looking, capable, livable king of the trucky crossovers with some fairly impressive all-wheel drive tech. Is it worthy of the Bronco badge? Eh, you decide. For us, it's just enough to wet our whistle until we get to have a go in the proper Bronco. Thanks for watching. This is pretty close to 2,200 pounds, right? We gotta stop ordering Uber Eats, stop cooking something.